everybody. I'm Doug. And I'm Pat. And we are back. Where you been? Where you been? I've been out and about. Have you been in the thrift stores? No. No. No, my wife said no more oh, thrift stores. Oh, right, right. We had an agreement upon that. Pawn shops. Okay. Guitar stores. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I, it's been, what, almost two years? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. It's been that long. Anyway, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to have uh, a little bit of a look via uh, Five Star Guitars, who are a Gibson dealer, and we're going to check into what's going on with Gibson. You know, what are they making? What changes are going on? Do you a know? Of, a lot of rumors. Uh, yeah, a lot of them. That, that Gibson, as a company, really isn't the same company that it was in 58. You know why? Orville's not there. He's not there. He wasn't there in 58 either, but, it's, but the people who were there in really? 58... They're not there now. So when Gibson, the company, has the name Gibson, it's, it's like they own the name. So we're interested in seeing how close they are to continuing on their traditions that make Gibson a household name. And Jeremy and Joff are going to join us today. Going to bring five custom shop Les Pauls that they have on the show. So that's going to be pretty cool. They're all standards? Custom? They are. They're all bursts. Oh. Yeah. I think three of them have big speeds on them. Wow. That'll be interesting. What do you think of big <laughs> What do you think of big speeds? I love them. I have mm -hmm. one on a 355. It's great. I mean, I, I like them, but I like having guitars that don't have big speeds, too. problem with staying in tune? Well, yeah, it depends on how much you, you use them. Like if you're going, if you're doing uh, Eruption by Van Halen, okay. probably shouldn't do Eruption by Van Halen. But if you're doing sweet vibratos, they're great. They're yeah. fabulous. I like them. Hmm. So uh, something else we're going to do before we uh, go to the Gibson guys, also known as um, the music store guys, is in the uh, spare time that we've had, I kind of cruise around on YouTube a bit, don't you? No. Okay. Uh, a couple guys that I really like is uh, Tom Bukovac. And one of the things that Tom does besides is a great Nashville session player, uh, has this show that he does. Maybe you guys know a bit about it. If you don't, you should check him out. He also does a thing where he has people make comments on his show. And he calls it the uh, viewer comment bin. And I thought, why don't we do that? We've only been doing our show besides the two years we took off. For what, like nine years or ten years or something? Yeah, something like that. So I thought maybe we would do is let's start the show by taking a look at some of the comments that we've had over the years, and then we will uh, go on with the Gibson guys. Okay. You want to know what the what's Gibson really... guys is? That Jeff Joff and Jeep. That's them. Oh. From. Is it Five Star Guitar? Five Star Guitars in Hillsboro. That's what I thought. They're our music right. store guys. Oh. And we're really, really, really glad they came on the show. Hey, you want to know what a really cool amplifier is this one over here this is a trainer bassmaster mark ii yba1a this uh, i bought this amplifier in uh, 1970 and you and i have been on stage with it where it proceeded to blow up all the speakers that i owned is it heavy it's 65 pounds <laughs> incredible uh, guitar amplifier this particular one is the higher powered one. Then they make one called the YBA-1, which is a little bit less powered. Incredible guitar amp. But you know what else it is? Boat anchor. It's a good bass amplifier. Oh. Yeah, I've been using it in my recording sessions using my bass guitars, my Rickenbacker 4003S and my Fender P bass um, for doing a recording session, miking the cabinet through it. And it just sounds great. Huh. Yeah. So I thought I'd throw that out in case anybody is thinking about wanting to increase their biceps by buying one of these amps and trying to transport it from one end of the room to the other because, yeah, they have transformers on them that are like that big. It, it certainly helped you. Yeah, all I know. Some people thought it was steroids, but it's, it's, actually, it's actually the trainers. Let's go see what some of those comments are. Okay. We're going to go to the viewer comment section that... Uh, has been going on for eight years or so. Eight or nine, yeah. It's been pretty entertaining. It's been uh, overall, especially in this last year, we just want to say thanks so much for the great comments, 
people missed us and uh, and you know it's a community that we were hoping for and it's a community that we have and so thanks for all that um, we have some consistent themes in some of the comments that actually go back pretty far good or bad um, actually there, <laughs> there are not really any any real bad ones if there are some real bad ones I just delete them anyway because yeah. we want to make this a conversation with people that are interested in vintage guitars want to talk well, about what we want to talk about besides you're sensitive and you know what you're feeling. I about. tear up. Well, yeah. Yeah, and then I take it out, and others I lash out. Yeah. I fly off the and handle. Believe me, that's not anything you want no. to see. No, 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 no. Uh, we've had some uh, pretty pretty good comments in the past. Uh, some of them, well, I'll just kind of run over some of them real quick. Is uh, people are inquisitive about our hats, mainly about yours, oh. and we have talked about this to a certain degree. Is that your hat is uh, not made anymore, right? No. Yeah. No. So. If it's not made anymore, that means it's highly collectible. Yes. Like a one-off maybe now. Could be. Yeah. So I guess are we going to be talking about doing some sort of auctioning thing or um, or what are we holding out for? And I mean, mm. not so much we holding out for. What are you holding out for? I, you know, I, I haven't given it any thought, but um, I'll think about it and get back to you. Yeah. See, when he says that, that means that he's not going to get back to you. So <laughs> I just, <laughs> I'm warning you. Um, this one is a Columbia Sportswear hat that's called a, a watchman's hat, and they don't make it anymore. <laughs> Are you going to sell that? Auction it off? I don't know. I'll get back to you on that. <clears throat> uh, another real funny one has been um, with our first show. I'm going to use my phone here to, Ooh, to do it. Yeah, it's nice. And this would be about the, uh, our first show that we had that was about... Um, when we introduced the concept that we have a couple of highly collectible guitars and are comparing them to uh, a newer guitar that has new pickups in it, does it really sound like that? But an event happened with Patrick, which was his match thing. So here's a comment that we had not that long ago. All three guitars sound great. I think I like the sound of the 60 LP the best. But upon listening to the demo, again, I have a hard time selecting one over the other. The Heritage is definitely in the same league as the LPs. Might even edge them out. Highly subjective. Great video, guys. If you can provide a mailing address, I'll send you some matches that work. <laughs> you haven't seen that show. That's our first one. And we would appreciate that. It goes on for the whole show. So, so yeah, that was pretty funny. Our German show. Hey, that was pretty fun. We have a lot of uh, uh, German nationals who have written us and thanked us for that show. They really enjoyed Hank and his oh, yeah. German thing. But one of the comments we got early on, which was... <laughs> Uh, I put in a piece of music at the front of it, which is called uh, Deutschland, Deutschland, because the Germans can be very nationalistic, as Americans can, and pretty much anybody can. And he uh, accused us of being Nazis. <laughs> cool. Okay, so, so sorry about that. Uh, we're not Nazis. We're, so let's just, you know, move past that one. We've had Joe Bonamassa on now uh, a couple times. Three times? Two or three, yeah. yeah. And uh, most of the comments about Joe, by far the majority of them, are, are uh, appreciative of the fact that he's a well-known touring musician, whether you're really crazy about his playing or whether you aren't. He does bring some insights in, uh, to, the, to the show here mm -hmm. because he does tour with the, the guitars that we were talking about quite a bit. Yep. He's a good player. He's, uh, he's popular, and his popularity a, great player, yeah. uh, a lot of times works against him. But... Uh, yeah, we appreciate Joe, and and uh, and we're glad that he came on the show all those times. It'd be nice to have him come back. I, I I'm sure he will. He has a, a tour set up. Uh, according to a show, I think he was on um, Norman's show, uh, the guitar show for you know Norman's rare guitars. Right. Yeah, and he said that he had in the fall uh, 32 shows booked. Um, we're wondering about that's going to be happening. So anyway. Yeah, depending upon COVID, probably. That's the problem. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, I got one. Uh, I've gotten emails from people wanting to know about you. Because they said that they know too much about me. <laughs> like the, what? Well, I've at music stores and played music for years and years and years and all of this and, and collect guitars, play them and all this other kind of stuff. But and I they don't wanted do to that? Know, they wanted to know where you were coming from. Like, 
How long have you been playing? Uh, Are you playing now? Where can they see you play? Um, uh, well, it's kind of the premise of the show that I am a professional guitar player since I was in high school, and uh, so and that was before the war. That was in that was right after the uh, Spanish flu. Right, uh, we got over that. So I'm really adjusted already to the COVID. Okay, the COVID nineteen. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so our relationship is that I'm a professional player and have been for a long time. We've known each other for a really long time. Um, as I was talking with a, a 50 years isn't that 50 long. 50 to 60. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's another comment we get. Listen to this. We're noisy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what bad. kind of noises <laughs> do we make? Well, we'll be brief. We slurp our tea. Uh, our amplifiers are noisy. Uh, somebody complains about the humming of them. So let me get this right. We're, we're using amplifiers that are 40, 50, 60 years old, guitars that are 40, 50, 60 years old. And that's what they sound like in the room here. They hum, uh, especially uh, uh, P90 guitars, you know, single coil. Yeah. And amplifiers, they hum. They're kind of, they're kind of noisy. So sorry about that, but goes with the territory. I mean, you'd think watching guys do demos with half a million dollars worth of guitars through vintage amps, that that would suffice, but. Yeah. Yeah, but You're maybe right. not. So uh, thanks for almost all of you for not mentioning the fact that we're noisy. Or <laughs> one is our leather jackets were noisy. They're leather jackets, they're noisy. <laughs> we're noisy. Four. Do you know what they call PAFs in Europe? Uh, I do. What? PAFs. Yep. Yeah. Or pickups? Paths. Pups? No. Pup paths. P-A-Fs. Do, do you have pup paths? Are your pups? I'm missing, the, I'm missing him. Are doing your pups paths? Please send me your address so I can send a couple cigar lighters. He's killing me with those matches. Thank you, Robert, Robert Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See this ruckus? Still, yeah. See this ruckus that's going on here? Uh, Joe Bonamassa, when he came on for the How Do You Get That Tone show, two with Joe Bonamassa. Mm -hmm. That was a great series. First one was us talking about which ones uh, of the elements of playing guitar have the most impact. Player, amp, guitar, pickups, wiring harness, et cetera, et cetera. And then we get the answer when Joe comes on the second time. Of course, he was playing Oscar through the, yeah. the Vox. But. Uh, Robert Sanders also says, oh, yeah, big fan <clears throat> and love your show of Joe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this is a typical comment that we get now of the fact that we're delinquent on doing anything. Uh, come on now. This Not is go my fault. Yeah, ask your wife or your daughters. He's always traveling, moving around. He can't seem to sit still. Yeah, you're always traveling, too, to watch your daughter's dogs. <laughs> They're big dogs. Yeah. As a matter of fact, where Great Dane. you took a little break right this at this time that you came over here, where were you coming from? I'm not going to say. Where were you coming from? Uh, I'll give you multiple choice. You were coming from one of your daughter's house, or you're coming from your house. Yeah, yeah, one or the other. Yeah, not your house. Come on now, this has gone on long enough. Time to dust yourself off and get back online. Well, thank you for all that. We. Uh, we are going to get back online. Hmm. You know another guy I really like on YouTube? And not because of his name. He goes by Uncle Doug. Oh. And he's a guy that is an amplifier repair guy. Huh. Like, so he sounds like an amplifier repair guy. Like, he's not like going, hey, you know, we've got this. He's just going, well, let's take a look at this chassis. Oh, so we've got some EC83s. I mean, his shows are 45 minutes long because he takes the amplifier out of the box that's been shipped to him, hmm. reads the, the directive from the owner, and, and then he goes through the amplifier. Why do I like that? I kind of like it because I, like, I could find amplifiers like what I have or like what you have, which we have some. And he goes through them and finds out things about them. He tells you about things that are commonly go wrong with them. And, and oh, I go, that's oh. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Like, uh, where you can see that there are a number of people online that do uh, shows about that. There's a, a a woman who does a show like that. So, but anyway, Uncle Doug. So I like Uncle Doug. I like Tom Bukovac. Who do you like? 
Um, I like just about everybody. Yeah. Because I'm a social um, pariah. Not, yeah, that'll that'll work. <laughs> What's that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a fish with teeth? <laughs> that's no, a, that's a piranha. That's a piranha. Yeah. Do you like to watch um, uh, videos of, of bands from the past? I do because I'm stuck in the 60s anyway. What bands? So what, what would I the like the Hollies. Mm. Um, you know, just all those, uh, all those 60s bands and, and some of the early 70s stuff. You know, there's some interesting Almond Brothers and things like that. So. Uh -huh. Guitar guys? Guitar guys. Mm -hmm. Mostly guitar videos where the, you know, where the guitar players are, are wailing away. They watch old Cream stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, just... Um, you can see some cool guitars in the old days. There's one of the Hollies doing something like Look Through Any Window, I think. And uh, Graham Nash is playing uh, a black custom. I right. think he's playing like a, a, a staple pickup custom. Yep. And the other guy, I can't remember his name. Nix, um, Tony Nix, Tony Hicks. Tony Hicks. Tony Hicks. He's Hicks. playing a sunburst. Yeah. So there, this is 1968, and it's and and also we mentioned him before. There's one of the Love and Spoonful oh, yeah. uh, on TV, and John Sebastian has one, and yep. kind of the, I don't know I don't know where that guitar went. Do you know where that guitar? I went? just saw where some somebody has 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 got it, mm -hmm. and is now taking photos of it and and, uh, and showing it off. You know, and early Keith Richards stuff, you know, yep. I think in the, With the big speed. fadeaway video and, um, yeah. Something else we probably ought to talk about is our uh, love-hate relationship with Billy Gibbons. We have uh, said some things in the past that have been slightly um, negative about Billy because he has basically screwed us over for eight and a half, nine years of with us inviting him to come on the show. And it, even though we are bitter and um, we hold this resentment in us and it fuels our uh, negativity daily. So Billy, even though you are probably not watching this, but we still want to have you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you think that'll work? <laughs> That's I like, don't know. Uh, I, I'm not sure. You've... Uh, You've put in some recent efforts. I have Tell us about a this. lot of recent efforts. In fact, um, they came up through Portland just the other day. And do you think that he would stop and do the show? Or Absolutely, even call? without fail. Yeah, so I finally got a hold of him afterward. Yeah. You talked to Billy? I did. And, and he apologized for not making it to the show and promised, promised that he would do it soon. Now, whether that means while the tour is taking a break or after the tour is over in, I think it's over in October or something, uh, we're fully expecting to hear from Billy um, and to have him on the show. He promised. I'm having a hard time with this. He, well. I'm, no, I'm having a hard time with this because Billy, Reverend Billy G. Yeah. Is a lying son of a bitch. Well, and and uh, he's yeah. lied to you, and he's broken your heart, and he's broken my heart. And he's breaking their heart right now. <coughs> he's they the, he's the reason we we did this really to begin with. If you look at the first show, yeah, you know, what, yeah. What album do we hold? Up? Were, we, were we holding up Guns and Roses? Or, no, uh, or Billy Squire, or uh, um, uh, Simon and Garfunkel? No. Ten years after? No, no, no. Meet the Beatles? No. No. Even though, even though uh, George Harrison, bless his soul, wanted to come on the show. He did. He did. Yeah, I, I think I talked to him last week. Oh. This is the album that we held up. And there's another tie-in here. Is in one of the comments that said, when you guys held up the album, this is referring back to the first show when we held up this album, I'm going to hold up some time real soon, is that they couldn't really see it that well. Um, so I'm going to hold it up again. I'm talking about this one, which is an original... ZZ Top first album. On the cover is Billy's guitar, Pearly Gates. Our assumption was that he was playing this guitar on this record. Right. This record sounds really good, the, the original version of it, before 
ZZ Top got popular in the 80s, and then they added reverb to everything. And then that, it's the same record with reverb on it, but don't listen to that one. YouTube. There is all of a sudden, because Dusty Hill has passed away recently, is that there's lots of ZZ Top live stuff that has shown up on YouTube. It's just the audio. And uh, 71, 72, those guys are killing. Oh. These, the, that sound of that band is this band. You guys should find those. 71, and listen to what that sounds like. It is breathtaking. And that was a huge, huge influence on me and a huge influence yeah. on you. you and know, continues to be. 71, 72 live. Try yeah. and find some of that stuff. It is vicious. And it, it's, the amplifiers sound like they're just blowing up. They're probably playing Marshalls. They rebranded them Rio Grande. Yeah. But from what I understand, and when Billy comes on the show for sure, we can ask him this. They were the Marshalls, the 100-watt Marshalls that they got from Jeff Beck. Uh -huh. And they, I mean tone forever tone forever it was the 70s and we were inspired by billy and we do hope that he'll come on the show so we can talk about it a little bit before he passes away or we do because and, let's face it we're all we're and, all and i'm not and gonna beg angel. and grovel or anything like that but come on come on man please <laughs> just come on man we got this for the pimples yeah That was kind of sad, the way we groveled about uh, getting Billy on the show. Well, you know, promises are promises. And if a guy promises something and doesn't come through, follow through, then that's what you got to do. Yeah. Well, when you made that comment about that you were going to meet up with Billy and get him on the show, yep. and that was going to be like in October or November, yep. we're filming this right now in January. So that son of a bitch never contacted anybody, did he? No, and you know what? I sent him a Christmas card. <laughs> what a joke. And with, to, with to, to, to end, no, no, to Antones, where they did a Christmas show and all this. And mm -hmm. um, the gal I talked to said that they, uh, she was going to give him the card when he came in. <laughs> And I haven't heard a word from anybody. So, no. Bill, if you got my Christmas card, Merry Christmas. Yeah, Happy Holidays. Yeah, have a, have a good have New a, Year. Have a really, really great life, Yeah, Billy. Yeah. Well, let's get away from the pain for a second. Okay. Let's, um, let's go to our uh, music store, guys. Let's talk about Gibson and what they're doing now. So we are here with uh, Jeremy and Joff from Five Star Guitars. They are going to be representative <coughs> for us as the music store guys. So whenever we refer to the music store guys, we're referring to them. So <laughs> these guys are Gibson dealers. So we're going to talk about Gibson guitars, especially Les Pauls, ordering Les Pauls now, and uh, how they do it, what the process is, and what those guitars look like. Mm -hmm. So guys. Uh, how do you order these guitars? <laughs> With uh, it depend. It actually it, it does depend on uh, it does depend on uh, like what production level. Um, so there's the regular production stuff that you would think of as like, like Les Paul standards. Gibson USA. Gibson USA is what they refer to it as. So okay. the usual. And that's good. I think to standards. refer to it as what Gibson because that's always confusing. I think mm -hmm. when they're changing their names and this and that of the some of the. Well, there, there's series. basically like three parts to it, right? So there's Gibson USA, which is all their standard electric stuff, right? Then there's Gibson Custom Shop, which does historic reissues, and, and they'll also do custom stuff, and we'll get into that in a minute. Yep. We've been doing a bunch of work with them on that. Um, and then there's uh, the acoustic side of things, it's all done in Montana. So yeah, It all, has been for years, I think. Yeah, I yeah, it's, uh, yeah, like I think they just celebrated their 35th anniversary, mm -hmm. or 30th anniversary, something like that. I think isn't Pretty much everything. There's different facilities in Nashville, but where stuff was split up between Memphis and Nashville, and, and all the electric stuff's now in Nashville. <coughs> yeah. Different different places. Custom Shop is separate from... Yeah, they're down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we were there in July, so we saw... Uh, we, we toured and um, we talked with the guys at the USA facility and at the Custom Shop facility. Is uh, Memphis still a manufacturing place? Do they make not not for Gibson. They don't do it. It used to be the ES stuff. Uh -huh. the, the hollow bodies and semi hollows mm -hmm. were done in Memphis. 
but gosh, two years ago they they moved it uh, around yeah. around the time that they reorganized. Um, mm-hmm. They they moved all the production to uh, to Nashville, and it took them a little while to to kind of retool. And I, I think you know it was a smart move to not just put out guitars. I mean, they had to make sure that not only you know that they were doing it, but that they were doing it right. And so that's why you don't see too many in the field right now. Um, but we've we've got a bunch of them on order, and they're cool. What we've seen uh, is great. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's been been really good. Um, so yeah, and then you know the the way that we the way that we order it. I mean, like ordering from any other company for the most part. Um, but the the custom shop stuff is a little bit different in that. You know, you can go onto their website and you can see what they offer. Right, there's standard offerings for like a you know an R9, right, like a '59 reissue, and they offer it in three or four different uh, finishes. But you can also go off menu and have it done in in any finish you want with different pickups, different hardware. Like they just truly like a custom experience. And so we've been doing that not only for customers. You know, like you come in and you want a '59, but you want it in you know, purple, metallic, or whatever, it, it can be done. Um, Everything has a price. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, it, there's an upcharge for it, for sure. Um, and then, uh, you know, we so we've been doing that for customers and also for us, and, and we've we started to do what they call um, PSLs, pre-sold limited runs, that are, you know, if you do a one-off or anything under five, it's a made-to-measure, you know, and that's through that program. And you just so kinda, made to measure would probably be something that a customer would be familiar with. PSL is like kind of an in, in such, uh, enough so that we call it a pumpkin spice latte in the right, shop now. Right. It, it doesn't mean anything oh. outside the four walls of a. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but but for us, like the difference is, it's not a made to measure. It, it actually gets its own skew, and it's a it's a run of like five or more. Okay, so made to measure. What would that be? Would that be where they actually take a guitar and laser it and all that? No, it, it refers to, you know, they'll make it to your specs. You basically just choose you know, ah, from, ah. from a menu of things. Okay. Yeah, and you have that menu. It's just a vast menu. You. Well, as, a, as an example, yeah, I mean, we've got, like, what the build sheet So the like. build sheet, this is, like, a, the result of the menu. So the, the menu doesn't exist. Secret documents um, revealed secret documents, right here. Yeah. Secret. <laughs> so there's... Yeah. We were we were actually... The, the analogy, right? <laughs> the analogy, I think, fits, though, the... Um, that there's there's a menu and it's pretty vast of stuff, but it's not um, not even published. It's more of those like, hey, can we get something like this? And then, yeah, that color's called this. Like, so you can ask questions and get at what's on the menu. Is it not published like to you? As even to us, a lot of stuff is <coughs> well, not the, published. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think, I think wow, what, a, what? I, I think there's so many possibilities. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, the, the, I mean, essentially, they can reproduce anything that they've ever done, but they can also do some things that they've never done, and and that's you know, that's a lot of different variables, right? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, we've been experimenting with you know, <laughs> pouring concrete. Yeah, out they're back, pouring. And it's, con- quite... it's, it's at the Doug and Pat Studios. We get a deal on the room, okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so these 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 seats. Is it almost like really like so you have the sheet there, but you can kind of just come up with any idea that you want and run it by them? Yeah. 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 I mean, we we've we've asked for some stuff that. Um, you know that they had to get back to us as to whether they could do it or not. And sometimes the like whether or not they can do something has to do with like the you know the person on the inside helping us figure out what we want to. It's like how long do you want to wait for this guitar because <coughs> we don't know when we're getting the knobs in that you just asked for. So we can do the rest of it. Right. We can do that color, yeah. but the knobs are going to take a while because it's going to be be a bit before we can either make or get. Yeah, I mean the the, the experience that we had with these guitars that we'll we'll show you like we were in Nashville for Summer Nam it was the uh, middle of July this year. And we went into the custom shop, we we you know went through hundreds of tops and picked out like, you know, 40 of them, 50 of them that we were going to use for our builds. You know, and, and for our customers that we've got them and you know they're available if, if people want to pick through those. Hmm. Um, but also um, you know, after that, we sat down. We actually went to a barbecue place, sat down with the custom shop guy, um, you know, our contact, had lunch, and just talked about like, you know, we, we kind of want this. What do you think? And it was it was very much interactive. Um, you know, I mean, he's got so much more experience with it than we do in terms of, you know, not only what's possible, but also just 
you know, kind of thinking it through like, well, you know, if, if you do this, then, you know, you want to think about that, whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, it's fun with colors too, because you could show him like, I, I just have, like, I'm sure everybody has just pictures of guitars on my phone yeah. and like, just flip through and like <laughs> what, what, uh, you know, yeah, it's either guitars or my kids. That's what's on my phone. Uh-huh. So, so, so what, what color is this? Can we match this thing? Really what would you call this? Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't know which is more expensive, but. But uh, you but, can put the guitars in a case and put them away, though, and you don't have to feed them <laughs> or educate them. Yeah, yeah I, I, they don't. They never talk I back. Yeah. I wonder where my daughter went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quick. I got a question for you. Yeah. If I walk into your shop and want a Les Paul <coughs> custom made, how long? That's a really good question. If it's if you're talking custom shop like this stuff, um, it can be about ten months, but. Some of it we've been been able to, and these are examples of we shortcut the line. Like we picked out these tops in July and end of September, early October, we got the guitars because we and our contact on the inside were organized enough with what we wanted that when something that was supposed to be made that day got held up because, oh shoot, we're out of bridges for yeah, this or other Or they build. don't have enough information. Or they don't have enough information, ordered, though, right? right? Yeah. Our stuff was already set aside. We'd already mm-hmm. numbered the tops that we wanted for each one of these guitars. We They knew everything that they needed, and um, and they had the stuff, so... So they went into production that day, and we got them early because we were, because we were organized on it. So it can be less, um, but... To your point, like what I would tell you if you're like, I want, I want this, how long is it going to be? I'd probably say 10 to 12 months and then we'll get all our specs ready to go and, and in there. And if we can jump the line because someone else missed the boat on, on their communication, we'd 10 to 12 months. It. So, yeah, um, it, that's it, fast these days. That is, yeah. that's half the time. Most that's what I heard. Yeah. That's yeah. it's, it's horrible. Actually import stuff, which used to be like. Three weeks was a long time on import stuff. Imports now is nine months. So oh, imports are, they're all, they're all out, yeah, they're all out on the same boats out there right now. But. <laughs> are imports Epiphone? Import, yeah, yeah. Epiphones. Um, but imports from anybody, you know, anything you get from overseas, PRS, Fender, um, any of that stuff made overseas. It's all they're all out on the same boats right now waiting. Do you guys carry Epiphone? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. A, it's hard a to get line, full line <laughs> yeah. dealer. A lot of talk on the. Uh, uh, blog stuff les paul forum and all that um with i think younger players or people don't have access to uh older guitars or expensive guitars and they talk about is there really any kind of a difference between the epiphone (coughs) model of so and so and and the gibson custom shop i mean that's Mm -hmm. actually like been set so not to take us off topic, but just think about that one. Is that well, everybody has their opinion, and so you don't want to disparage somebody's experience or, or opinion because <laughs> I'm not looking for a fight. Oh, I, well, I know that's why not, you go on forums, I, right? Yeah, well, be, thanks for stopping by. Jim. Right? Yeah, yeah. Be, be happy to address that. Um, okay, so one, I mean, I, I feel like the Epiphone stuff's probably never been better, and when you look at, you know, the the offering that they have and the price points, you know, I mean, it's just music gear in general. There's never been a lower barrier to entry, right? Mm-hmm. And and the Epiphone stuff is, I, I think, just it's really good. on whole better than it was 20 years ago, mm-hmm. better than it was 40 years ago. We got um, an Epiphone Lucille yesterday that's just yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's a brand, uh, like it's a brand new one, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but the, yeah, the BB King signature series. Yeah, yeah. No, and, sound no, mm-hmm. no, and there's an access panel on the back, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's... Um, you know, those are little switch does some wonderful guitars, you know. Uh, yeah, for the but, price point, they're amazing. But you know, I mean, in in general, I mean, you get like a an Epiphone Les Paul standard, and it's you know, it's a veneer on the top. It's not solid uh, maple, and you know, I mean, look, it, you just sort of do the math, right? That there's there's just no way to produce something like this in the United States with these materials, and they, they differ. I mean, there's just a difference mm-hmm. between that mahogany body and what you'd get on an Epiphone, or there's, really even in a in a, a USA model. Depending uh, on what you're trying to get get out of the instrument that you buy, like uh, there's a difference in some materials, like fret wire. Like a USA fret should last longer than an import fret, even if the fret dress and the setup and everything matches and it plays really well for what it is. Because of the material the, should, the material, yeah, yeah. The material uh, it made out of is a little more of a pure alloy in the USA stuff. And a lot of times the way things are seated 
um, and meaning like the frets pressed in and, and yeah. some manufacturers like PRS glue them in. So they're really like they're, they're in there. Um, Gibson stuff comes, can, you know, uh, they'll, they'll plex stuff. Um, mm-hmm. and so there's, there are certain things that getting, uh, getting something made in the USA, obviously the, you know, the cost of production, the labor is, is quite a bit different. You can swap out pickups. You could put you know, mm-hmm. burst buckers sure. in a, in a, in an Epiphone and you get so close to it that you're probably right. If you're, if your metric is, I played a gig with my band with a custom shop and I played a gig with my band with the Epiphone and no one in the audience knew which guitar was, which mm-hmm. it's probably <laughs> true. 90% probably of true. the time. I, I think it's that um, really true. Right. Yeah. You're, you're the, you're listening with your beer goggles on um, <laughs> and, oh. and it, ob- it, ob- it, 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 it is very, it's very, um, like by the time you get to like that point of it, yeah, there's if what you're looking for is a roadworthy instrument and yeah, you don't and need to spend point. and price point and you don't need to spend eight thousand dollars, but you, you don't need to. It might not actually. I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking. Maybe it's not school, practical. Maybe you don't have eight thousand. I mean, I don't know if there's any losers like that who would watch the Doug and Pat show. But, oh, okay. Uh, we're gonna take a short break. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we could talk about what you ordered. Mm-hmm. What it looks like on the sheet, and then hold up the guitars. Okay. And, uh, and maybe Sweet. we would have Pat hold up one of the guitars, but we would basically be sacrificing. Well, I didn't realize you let him touch stuff on this. Hey, this is your, bench, so. And they're your guitar. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this would be, this would be worthwhile maybe to hold up all three of them because sure. these are all the same. Okay. Um, but there are three different tops, and we picked out all of these tops. So, so this, can, these guitars are the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. These all come from the same build sheet where we ordered five of them. These are three of the five that we ordered and then same deal um i t- we took a ton of pictures of us going through these boxes of tops and it was just like i really like i really like this one so yeah put that one in the pile and then joff and i got back and as we were specking these we're like okay you know top, this even says i think um out of some of the ones that we got it was like we picked tops you know two eight seventeen and like of our of our list of tops, we were like, yeah, for this knowing, guitar, these are the ones that we think would yeah, turn out. Knowing the best. That, that these were gonna be uh, like have a Bigsby on here, like you know that effect. It was like, oh, if there was, yeah, I don't know. I mean, knowing that this part was gonna be covered might weigh into it. Okay, like, so oh, let's talk about the example. Bigsby. So they all have Bigsby on them. Are these popular again? Well, here's the thing. Okay. I, I think they're popular enough, and Gibson hasn't offered this in a long time. Gibson doesn't, you know, doesn't offer an R9 with a Bigsby. You have to custom order, right? Oh. So, you know, it was like, all right, let's 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 do some of those. I think people are gonna, will dig them. We like the idea. It's cool. Let's let's offer that. And so with the tops to um, some of these, and I think this was, this was one where part of choosing the tops came into what's going to get covered up by the Bigsby. So if there was something where there was less figuring sure. in the middle of it. But also, like you can see, you know, one of these has a little chevron. One of these has a really tight grain. Uh-huh. So in this case, we picked five tops that had some variety. So if somebody's interested in this, but they love the chevron, there's that one. If they want a really tight, curly grain, there's this one. Um, this may be a little more, you know, true to some tradition. Um, it's kind of, it's not as extreme. Right. Um, and so... You, you've got an aesthetic, but it's the same guitar. Yeah, they're all times. really fun to look at. I mean, they're all they're all different. Yeah. Like when, I'm, you know, this is the the thing about uh, curly maple is when you're looking at it in different lights, is that it becomes different tops. One side for the other. Yeah, it's it's cool. Yeah, it's it's yeah. So that's interesting. Maybe we should, uh, at some point, plug one of these in. That's not what they're for. Doug. Okay. You don't play these. Oh, that's There's right. Just, so we're gonna go ahead. You and just put look it, at them. We do have um, the Pat O'Donnell endorsed uh, glass case. Nice. Temperature controlled, and it, he sucks all the air out of it. Excellent, yeah. <laughs> but with his holes that he has. I think no, it's is disgusting. It pipe? <laughs> <laughs> it blows it me pipe? smoke in it. Smoke in it. Okay, so which guitar is this one? Uh, the The... One with the Bigsby on it. Yeah. So, so what 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 is what do you call this? Is this a uh, the, custom shop or uh, yeah? So this yeah, would be this is a custom, custom shop. shop. Same deal. Nineteen fifty nine. Would you like year? it relic as long as I have it on? Right. I can do the belt buckle thing on the back. Yeah. Real good. So, <laughs> tie it to the back of your car and drive down. So, color of this one is unburst. I'm um, just one of the. 
same pickups, though. Should be the same pickups. I love Bixby's myself, but... like the top end's a little more open. Yeah, maybe so. Know. But uh, it has a lot of clarity to it. It does. And of course, we have a major construction difference, which is this Bigsby on it. Mm -hmm. I think when people get into exploring these these Bigsby things, you know, like you'd be able to when you play some chords that would be average chords, you could. It makes them unaverage. I mean, that's not an average chord, but. Pickups. I mean, if you're gonna buy them, you might use them. Patrick comes with two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got two. <laughs> Well, that's our show uh, for today. We might remind you that you want to go to the website, thedougandpatshow.com. Why would they go there, Patrick? If they went there, they could purchase a wonderful post-Christmas gift. That's right. From the Doug and Pat Show. We have uh, T-shirts. We have them in the long sleeve. We have them in short sleeve. In the short sleeve, you can get the small logo and the large logo. In the long sleeve, and write this down, you can only get it in, in the small logo, not unlike what I'm wearing right here. Uh, we also have the uh, Doug and Pat Show hats, and uh, Lord knows what else we have uh, for sale there. But anyway, you guys yeah. need to be able to go that. So we're looking forward to the next show. We'll bring Jeremy and Joff back and some more of the guitars, and we're also going to get a... Uh, <clears throat> Victoria amplifier that says that they're going on the uh, GA40 Gibson, which we think is one of the best amps ever. I do. And we're going to actually find out how close is it to like a 5758 GA40, which is the Gibson GA40, one of our favorite amplifiers. We're going to do a demo on that and find out what's going on there and maybe a whole bunch of other stuff. So we're back doing some stuff. Whether you like it or not. Whether they like it or not. That's right. That's right. I'm Doug. And I'm Pat. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>